You're very welcome to FBD Simple Stadium on Hearty Cup final day. The band are out in the field behind us and the teams will be out shortly. Turles CBS up against Cashel Community School and I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by uh, two men here who know these teams oh so well. TJ Connolly here from Cashel and Ollie Kelly from Turles CBS and uh, TJ your son is playing today Ronan and uh, you've had that build up all week and uh, breakfast in the house this morning what was that like? Uh, we've had a, a quite build up Stevie um, they had a great semi-final against our school reach a fierce excitement obviously to, to qualify for the final of the Harty Cup so they needed to come back down a step or two because it was only the semi-final and they knew there was a big task in hand so over the last fortnight, obviously, going to school is probably a great place to go because they're in the final. But I, I think they've matured a bit that they know themselves that they had to keep their feet on the ground for two weeks and get their pr preparation right and, and get ready for today because it's a mammoth task ahead of them now for the next hour, Stevie. So it's been good, but it's been calm. And uh, the team have just been building all the time. It hasn't happened in just a few months. You know yourself from coaching teams across the years. So much work goes into this to you know get everything right in the big day. That's right, Stevie. And when the schools uh, transitioned over Cashel CBS to Cashel Community Schools, it was a massive, massive step. And it's it's taken a massive amount of time to get here. Like, it's been 50 years since Cashel got to the final. And it was a CBS back in 73. So there's been huge work. And there's been a huge amount of people behind the progress and, and the, the tireless hours and the lunch times and the after school. So, But th th they are today where they deserve to be. They've put in the work to get here, Stevie. And, like... You're at the cream of the crop today in a hearty cup final. Fierce inexperience because they haven't ever been here before, where Turles have, have probably all the experience coming in here and they've all the history and all the, and all the boys behind them to tell them how to prepare and how to get here. But look, it's two teams in a final, and, and as you know, lads, the day of a final, it takes its own course and anything can happen. But look, we're delighted to be here, and I'm delighted for the school that they're here. Ali Kelly is here with me, Deputy Principal in Turles CBS, and uh, you're here again. It's a, it's a huge thing, the Harty Cup in Turles, going back to the time of Jimmy Dial and all throughout time. Asher, it is a fantastic thing, yeah, and we're delighted to be here. A lovely day, Ma massive day for the county, massive day to have two Tipperary schools. In the, in the long history of the Harty, there hasn't been an occasion like this where two Tip schools have made it, so it's just a fantastic day. And yeah, there's a, there's a proud tradition in, in, in the school, a proud tradition in CBS, going back to that time. But we went a long time then without one, and until 2009, we won 2009, 2015. So we've only won two in the last 50 years as well. Um, so, look, tradition won't count for anything when we're out there today. It'll be fought out here between the two lines and two very good teams and well-prepared teams who are going to be going at it and made the best team win on the day. Mm, the quarterfinal stage, you met in Borlahan last year. Turles got a good start in that one and, uh, you know, it saw it through. But uh, Cashel, probably a different proposition today. Oh, sure. Two totally different teams, especially, I suppose, the Turles team. We got, we got kind of a couple of quick goals that day that changed the complexion of that game and probably got away on, on, on the scoreboard early, and that changed it. But we'll say, I suppose, Cashel were young last year. They probably have a, a lot of that team now who are up to the age, whereas it's the opposite maybe here. We have very few from last year that started that day, and we have a new team this year. You know, they're enthusiastic, but they're, they're quite young as well, a lot of boys, 17. So it's kind of role reversed almost. We're coming in here now with a young, a young team, Cashel have the mature team, so it's going to be a fierce, tough battle here. Mm, Adam Daly, a new recruit in Cashel Community School from Rockwell, TJ, and he's made a huge impact there in their full forward line. Huge impact, very good hurler and outstanding for the tip miners uh, in their campaign last year to win the All-Ireland Final. And look, at the end of the day, as Ali said, uh, the biggest winner today are Tipperary, with the crop of uh, talent that's here between the bo both sides. And I suppose last year, the year before, we were thinking that Tip Hurling was going into the doldrums, but it's far from that now, as you can see, both uh, schools in a hearty cup final today. It's very unusual to get uh, uh, two teams from the same county in it. So for Tipperary, it's absolutely brilliant. And for, for both schools, it's a great occasion and the atmosphere is building. And look, let the best team win. And, and it, there's someone going to be disappointed this evening, you know. But at the end of the day, there's another part of this where you move on to your, your Ireland stage as well. So there's, you have to get over today. Obviously, if you're beating in the Hearty Cup final, they're going to be down. But they've got to go back now and prepare and get ready for the next stage of this as well, which is, which is all new progress and a learning curve for everybody. They're young players, so they're learning as they go along. And uh, Cashel are going into this as underdogs in a lot of people's eyes. But we saw Tulla take on Art School Reach last year. Our ladies, Temple Moore from Tip, a few years ago, small school. So, like, there's there's a drive and ambition within the group. 
There is a driving ambition within the group, and when they got their draw at the start of the year with Flannins and Arsgal Reese, you'd be saying, look, if we can get to the Harty Cup final, it would be some achievement to beat those two uh, schools. And they did, but every game Cashel played this year, it was to the pin of their collar. It went to the final moments of every game. And so, look, they've been tested in all games. Turles have, have come to risk very comfortably in great scores with great forwards, huge score lines put up. So, look... We have to contain Turles today very early. If we give them a chance to settle and get good scores and early scores, well, then we'll be chasing the game. But I think the casual backs are good and solid. Our midfielders are good. and our fought. We've, we've a balanced team. We're not depending on any one individual. They're balanced enough to, to know themselves that they all have to perform today. Good stuff, Ali Kelly. Uh, you'd agree with that, that uh, it's going to be on the day and uh, a good start is going to be huge. Oh, 100%. Like, this is a 50-50, 50-50 game. Um, at the start of the year, we wouldn't have known where we were really COVID probably over the last few years meant that these guys wouldn't have played together as a team much and it's a new team coming together uh, we're delighted with the progress that they've made delighted to be here absolutely delighted probably exceeded our expectations at the beginning of the year to be honest so it's fantastic to be here but we know it's going to be absolutely mammoth like Cashel have beaten the best teams in it they've taken out Flannins in the group stage taken out a fancied CBC side and the last day against Arts Reach what a performance I was down in Kilmallock before our own game and you know the, the, the determination and the heart they showed to eke out a one point win so if we're going to do this today it's going to take everything we have to do it but please God it does it goes like that it's, but it's going to be a great day and a great day for Tip Hurland please God great stuff you'd agree with that TJ final word Absolutely, look, and I wish Ollie the best. Ollie's a great man, has done a lot of work in Turles as well. And look, as we say at the end of the day, we want Cashel to win, Ollie wants Turles to win, but Tip are the biggest winners today. Good stuff, lads. Manny, thanks for joining me here today. Well, during the build up to this game, I caught up with both managers, and we're going to hear from Brendan Ryan from Cashel Community School and from Eamon Buckley of Turles CBS. As a school, you have that history going back to the time of Jimmy Doyle, and that's kind of come through the school. Even Paddy Maher then was a player under you in 2005, and now you have him as part of the management team. It just keeps going. It's a nice symmetry. Yeah, look, there's a great tradition in the school here just to see lads, you know, so many lads walking in with hurlies every day, going up to the yard at lunchtime, just poking, you know, it's, it's a sight to behold. It's just brilliant to see. And, um, yeah, to have Porig on board, like his experience now over the next 10 days is definitely going to be massive for the lads. Just to, you know, a man that's used to the big occasion, knows how to handle it, um, seems to get his, his best performance on the big day. Hopefully he can bring that to the lads now as well and, um, and we give that performance uh, come Sunday. Mm. And you've been involved with teams going back to since you started teaching in the school. Yeah, look, um, we've, we've got close a lot of times. Um, I've... I've been, whether it's unlucky or whatever, I haven't got over the line, I suppose, to win a heart yet. But, um, yeah, we've, we've won a lot over the last couple of years. I suppose even last year was probably one of our most successful years in the school, winning a Rice Cup, Munster under 15, County under 15, and a County under 17. So there's great work going on. Um, I know we, we have a great tradition, um, but when you think about it, I suppose, we have only won two Hearty Cups since 1956. And that's something that hurts us a little bit. And we'd like to add a couple of more as soon as we can, I suppose. Mm, and all the work that goes on in the clubs, I suppose, from when these kids are in primary school, um, your own club, Drum, Turles, McCarkey. And like it's building then, they go to secondary school then and they have a huge time of playing hurling there. And it goes all the way up to lads that you see lining out in the blue and gold like you did. Yeah, well, look, the work that goes on, like, we know th the work that goes on in the clubs, in the local primary schools, and we just try and build on that, and, and hopefully wants to leave us in, in after six years that they're as good a hurler as they can be. But um, definitely, like, we, we actually met up, we're, we're trying to build links with the local clubs all the time, and we met up with, our, with um, the club representatives before Christmas there, and just how can we work together, try and make the, the players and the and the and the students, I suppose, as best as they can be. And isn't it great for Tipperary that the lads are getting exposure to matches like this and big days like this, and hopefully it'll stand, stand Tipperary well in the future. Mm, you know Brendan Ryan well, the uh, Cashel CS manager, and like there's a lot of links between the two schools. It's so novel and exciting. Yeah, um, definitely you're going to have club mates there, I suppose, the likes of Borlan and, and Nakavilla especially, I suppose, there's lads on, on board panels. And there's going to be neighbours, I suppose, shouting against each other. And, you know, it's just going to add to the, the whole atmosphere. 
And, um, you know, it's, it's going to be some day, I say there'll be a massive crowd there, and it's, it's just a day to relish and a day to, to really look forward to. It was brilliant last year in Borlahan when the sides met as well. There was such colour that day at yeah. that match. Yeah, um, look, that was a massive battle again. Now, conditions were, were so poor the same day, so hopefully we'll have a better day um, on Sunday. But, uh, yeah, there was some crowd at that, and I'd say I said there'll be more again now come Sunday. Yeah, the buzz around Turles is brilliant, isn't it? People are asking, are you going to the Harty final? Yeah, it's brilliant. Anyone you meet there, that's all they want to talk about. And like you said there, oh, is there any injuries or how we fixed and all this? And, and uh, you know, Turles, anywhere anywhere we go, that's all everybody wants to talk about. And it's just fantastic for the school, for all the local clubs, the local community, and long may it last. What kind of final will we expect, Tim? Oh, look, it's going to be a completely different game again. So... Um, Look, every day we've gone out, we'd like to think we, we've gone up a couple of notches every day. So if we can find another couple of percent, hopefully, hopefully we get over the line. But it's going to be some effort and, and we'll see how we go. Joining me now is Brendan Ryan, manager of Cashel Community School. Great excitement, Brendan, in uh, your hinterland. Yeah, yeah, there's brilliant excitement. Sure, this, this is dream, dream stuff for, for our school and our first time getting to a final. It was only our second ever semi-final last weekend. And the last one was in 2002 when Andrew O'Shaughnessy put put us to the sword. So look, it's fabulous. Look, sure, it's it's after happening really fast. You know, we we were preparing there over Christmas for CBC at Cork and snuck through that, and that was no longer over. When you had to turn your eyes straight away to the semi-final against Ard Skull, and you know we had to get a performance there, and we weren't worrying about a win because we just had to perform. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been we'd have been out of our depth. So it's fabulous. There's great excitement, and the minute we won that shirt, now within two weeks, you have to get ready for a hearty final. So it is a quick turnaround from celebrating what are huge wins for the school there the last couple of weeks to to to, to get the performance again the next day, which will be needed. Like if we have to perf- if we have to be there thereabouts. And all the players are from the area. You've Borlahan players, Golden, Nakavilla, and uh, then Turles. Similar enough, but uh, the Holy Cross lads are involved. Your nephew is playing for the Turles team, Robbie Ryan. So there's a great energy about it, and you know it's a it's a final that everyone will remember. Ah, to look, Turles have class players all over the field, so we have to perform. It's as simple as that. We'd be we, for our school and for CBC. We focus on ourselves and and get the lads and get. Get, get, try and get the lads to perform to the best of their ability and see where it takes us so we have to do that the next day Turles, we probably get no sleep at all if we if we focus in on Turles because they have quality in every place and it, it isn't a case of tie down one or two It's we have to perform all over the field and, and see where that takes us and yeah it's great excitement sure, look, it's fabulous there's going to be Tipperary winners you know both Turles Eamon Buckley there and, 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 and his management team and, and all of us in Cashmere Music School sure look we all want to win, um, but at the end of the day, there's going to be Tipperary Hearty Cup winners, which is huge, and there's going to be 17, 18 year olds with Hearty Cup medals that'll be spoken about for years to come. So mm. it's great. The buzz with Cashel, the, the journey you've been on the last few years, you came from the B grade up to Hearty, and uh, keep pushing and keep achieving more. Yeah, look, it's it's it's, it's, it's 2005 since Eamon Buckley and myself were against each other. In a in a Hearty Cup quarter final where his selector Paddy Mayer was playing, and uh, you know we lost that day, and and we've been in the B a lot since, and the B has just become so competitive. There's less teams playing in the Hearty every year now, so you have schools that were always really competitive in Hearty Cup are now in the B. So getting out of the B is a huge challenge, huge challenge, and you know we're here today, and the boys are going to be in Simple Stadium for a Hearty Cup final on the back of work of lads there for the last six or seven years. You know we got to a Hearty Cup or a B quarter final and lost after extra time five years ago Owen, Owen Connolly of Cashel led us to a B final where we lost by the last puck of the game the following year we lost the semi-final by two points in injury time and then February 2020 we we, we, we got our nose in front of Doon at the right time to win a B final and and uh, we didn't get to play the All-Ireland final afterwards because of Covid hitting and then last year we were up Hearty when extracurricular activities in schools returned after the COVID and uh, look it is brilliant it's 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 the work of a lot of players the commitment and the dedication support of a lot of families and, and the support of the clubs over that period has resulted in these boys getting to play hearty you know and it's just fabulous it's just fabulous What type of final will we expect? Sure look it'll be a great occasion it'll be a great occasion both teams know each other very well these players play with each other which 
county squads there, or some of them with county 20s from both schools, or some of them with county minors in both schools. You know, it's going to be a great occasion. What game will it be like? Look, you have you've 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 great talent there on both sides, and they'll be going at each other. And you know, all we can do is prepare as best we can. I have great coaches with me, and Anthony Roach, a Wexford man living in Clonolty, Ross Moore. Uh, Robbie Costigan, an ex-Tipperary footballer there, and, and Owen Costigan from uh, J.K. Brackens. And all we can do is just try and get our lads to perform to the best of their ability and, and see where it takes us. Just brilliant to hear from the managers there of both camps ahead of today's game. The atmosphere is building here in FBD Semple Stadium, and I'm delighted here before the match to be joined by Jimmy Brown of TUS, uh, who are sponsoring this wonderful occasion and it is just fantastic here isn't it absolutely Stevie. i suppose hearty cup final is one of the the real um blue ribbon days of munster hurling um and it's good for this it's fantastic for the schools involved for the communities they represent and i suppose particularly today with a very unique pairing of two tip teams in it for the first time in the history of the competition and the number of clubs represented by these two schools is just fantastic and i suppose that as a clairman I'd say it's great for Tipperary, but from, from our point of view as an organisation, it's brilliant for us to be involved in this competition. You know, the, the connection with the community from our point of view to have it here where we, in Thurlis, where we have a campus um, is just fantastic. So we're delighted and wish uh, everybody well. Yeah, and the, the facilities you have here around Thurlis are growing all the time and, you know, bringing on a lot of these hurlers. Absolutely, I suppose that sport is a hugely important part of our, uh, of our values and part of our mission. And that part of helping the young people develop, um, you know, learning skills, social skills, but sport is part of that, which is a skill that lives with them through the rest of their lives. And certainly on the Turles campus, we have future developments coming in conjunction with Tipperary County Board. And we'd like to see that as being very much part of the sporting Turles of ethos of, of Turles and the sporting ethos of TUS. Great stuff. Well, Jimmy, I know you're heading back over to the other side there. So we wish you well and we'll chat to you soon. And we also have a uh, column... Uh, Hayes who can come in here and you can just uh, swap headsets there guys and we'll be ready to go again the teams are out on the field in front of me here Turles and uh, Cashel lined up and ready to go here and this match here today when we look at the crowds and we look at the people out there we are seeing a packed stand opposite us here and it is such a brilliant atmosphere and uh, Colm Hayes of Munster Schools this is absolutely brilliant isn't it? A fantastic occasion here in, in FD Simple Stadium. Two teams. The day is absolutely fantastic. Um, the crowd are well up for it. And um, yeah, we're really looking forward to it now. History of this competition goes way back. It's the first time, though, that two Tipperary schools have met in the final. And it is, you know, a really unique occasion. A really unique occasion, yeah. Um, uh, the Tipperary public are, are here in, in their droves. And. Um, a, great, a special day for, for Tipperary Hurling, for all the work that's been done at underage level, club level and school level over the last number of years. Coming to fruition here now and, uh, you know, Munster Hurling is going to be the winner today and we're looking forward to a really, really exciting contest and, uh, and best look to both teams, really. Great stuff, Colm Hayes. Many thanks for joining us here today. And we are all set for today's game. I'm going to go through the starting teams now, first with uh, Cashel Community School, the first team that I'll go through here today before we join up with uh, Ken Hogan for our match commentary. So Cashel Community School line out with Tommy Breen in goals from Borla and Duala, Keen Ryan of Golden Kilfiekel, Jack Quinlan of Feathered, and Kieran Byrne from Golden Kilfiekel, the full back line. The half back line then, Darius Spillane of Feathered, Gerard Dwyer is centre back, and Dylan Fogarty from Borlahan is at seven. The, uh, the midfield pairing then is Ronan Connolly of Cashel King Cormacks and Shane Buckley of Nakavilla Donaski Kickhams. And then the half forward line, Aina Ormond from Golden, Ben Corrivan of the same club, and Oshino Donahu from Cashel. The full forward line, David McGrath from Cashel, Fabian Ryan also from the King Cormacks, and Adam Daly from Nakavilla Donaski Kickhams. Their subs then, they have 15 on the match day program, Cormac Gleeson. Carl Gerrishy, Ross Darcy, Podrick Dalton, Jack Dalton, Anthony Walsh, Bobby Power, Robbie Darcy, Charlie Ryan, Dermot Coffey is there, Sean Maroney from Feathered, Sean Burke is there, Dara Ryan from Borlahan, Podrick Quinlan from Rose Green, and Kieran O'Dwyer of Cashel King Cormacks. Moving to Turles CBS then. 
They line out with Owen Horgan of Naka Village on the ski kick in goals. A full back line of Liam Doyle from Holy Cross, Evan Morris from the same club, and Padraig O'Dwyer of Killinall. And then the half back line is Owen O'Donnell from Lockmore, Jim Ryan of Holy Cross Ballycahill, and Stephen Walsh of McCarkey Burris. In centre field, Joe Egan of McCarkey and Tommy Marr, the captain from Sarsfields, is there. And then the half forward line, Joe Marr from McCarkey Burris, Daniel Rossiter of Dourless Oak, and Aidan Stakelam of Sarsfields. Robbie Ryan from Holy Cross, Bally Cahill, who scored a brilliant goal in the semi final, is at 13. Jimmy Lahart, who also goal in the same game, is at 14 and 15 then is Robbie Stapleton from Sarsfields. They have 15 on the match day programme here as well. David uh, and the subs list, David McCormack, Liam Corcoran, Dara Carr, James Doyle, Oshin Dewan, Cormack Fitzpatrick, Dara Fitzpatrick, Bill Flanagan, Sean Hayes, Dara Kelly, Jack Lahart, Paul McCahy from Lockmore, Eugene O'Dwyer, Emmett Ralph and Kieran Purcell and what a day Ken Hogan what an occasion and what an absolutely brilliant atmosphere here we see there on the Turles CBS subs list Oshin Dewan is from Cashel and he's playing with Turles today and there's lads from Borlahan playing there with Cashel and their friends are playing with uh, Turles CBS that they're training with with their club all the time same with Nakavilla, Adam Daly corner forward for Cashel Owen Horgan goalkeeper for Turles CBS, same club. What an occasion. Huge occasion. And of course, manager of Cashel, his nephew, the star forward on the on the Turles CBS team. So a wonderful occasion. Brilliant atmosphere, beautiful field, and what a day for a game. Wouldn't you love to be out? And a big crowd, like the new stand almost full there, and the crowds really getting behind their schools. Um, this is really an intriguing thing in the whole history of the, of, the, of, of the Harty Cup. The first time ever in 106 years that both Tipperary teams are contesting the Harty Cup final. So this is a unique occasion and I think both teams will respond as well. And uh, Ken, we're just looking at the scenes. The pitch is in top class, Nick, considering the time of year. And there was a little bit of frost down at the sides early this morning. That cleared off there. And, you know, it looks pristine here. The stand is packed up. So does. the atmosphere is fantastic. Going through the square earlier, there was just a brilliant crowd and everybody cheering and school kids singing songs. And, like, everything is built towards this. And this is something they'll always remember. Oh, yeah, and to play in the, in the field of legends in the Simple Stadium, you know. And obviously, Simple Stadium hosted Tip and Leash last night, but it looked like it was never used this year. Um, absolutely cracking atmosphere. Good luck as well to the referee, Eamon Stapleton, his first Harty Cup final from, from Doon, and uh, Tipperary Heritage as well. So, from his perspective, really looking forward to a great game, Stephen. And uh, we are just watching them here. Ken, the Leinster Schools final yesterday, Offaly Schools won that but I'm told they're not going to be able to continue to the All-Ireland series because it's a combination of schools so Kieran's will be true in that even though they were runners up and um, it's looking like either it's Kalashta Owen I think or um, school good from New, Good Council good, from, good from, New Council from Ex, yeah. so like it, it's open here whoever loses they still have an All-Ireland series but the Harty is the one they've always dreamed of I found anyway in Tipperary. Yeah, Harty Cup is huge. It's wide, absolutely wide open. Um, St. Kieran's, as you well know, even though beaten yesterday by, by the combined Offaly schools, will come back strong for the All-Ireland Championship. Also, Jason Ford, of course, starred here in an All-Ireland Colleges win with Nina CBS in this very pitch. And Nina CBS weren't Harty Cup champions. So there's still life after this. And I think both managements will be impressing upon their players. It's... There's nothing to lose here. It's all for you. Go for it. Big, big game. And of course, probably Turles CBS, probably going in as, you know, as favourites from that perspective. And, you know, youngsters carry a that favourites tag. It's not, uh, not an easy thing. But I think both teams will go at this hammer and tongs. Huge occasion here, Stephen. So they're lining up here. We're going to have uh, the Arona Veen very shortly here in Turles. But... Uh, the atmosphere over there is like nothing else you see apart from, you know, the Munster Championship in Senior Inter-County here. It, you know, it has that vibe, doesn't it? I mean, if this was in Borlaha now or Holy Cross, the place would be absolutely covered. But there's a huge, huge crowd here and singing. And it, it really makes it. Do you think nerves will play a part? 
And yours will always play a part with 16, 17, 18 year olds. But this is another 19 competition. So we have, we have guys here already that have played at, at club senior level. So there is an element of experience. And you know, you saw the top class minor games last year, uh, including the All Ireland final between Tipperary and Offaly. A number of these players playing again. So they're well used to these type of occasions. And it's a dream to play, you know. Uh, the pipe band is here, everything is ready to go, all systems go. But uh, it's a dream to play in Simple Stadium. We always are afraid that, you know, you'll be lost in Simple Stadium. But today, what a crowd here. Huge numbers, you know, turning out. Crowds still coming in, you know, it's an early start. One o'clock, it can catch people. So there will be people coming in five to one, one o'clock, five past one. And uh, here's the band now coming down. The goalkeeper is coming down to join his uh, cash and teammates. So that's an interesting one as well, but fantastic occasion and great ovation from the from the crowd for the for both participating teams. Yeah, look at the colour and the, the buzz around the place here. Turles lining out in the white jerseys and uh, Cashel in the gold and blue. So they're just bring, coming over here in front of uh, Sean Tracy, Pipe Band, Turles being led there by Tommy Mayer and... Uh, Cashel being led by their giant captains there, Ronan Connolly and Ben Corrivan, and they prepare for this one. And uh, anyone who plays this level, they always speak so fondly of it, Ken. You know, I mean, um, Johnny Luby was the captain when Cashel CBS got to the final uh, back in the day. And Turles, I know James Barry often mentions this and, you know, being part of the St. Patrick's Day Parade with Jimmy Dial is something that he said always stands out in his memory after winning the Harty Cup. So it's something that, you know, it has that history that is, uh, it runs very deep. It runs very deep and college's hurling is unique. You know, I had, uh, I had, uh, suppose, the honour of playing with Burr in an under, uh, junior, a junior A final against St. Peter's of Wexford in Nolan Park. But it was the curtain raiser for the All-Ireland College's final, which Our Ladies of Templemore won. And um, I was in awe, even though there were only a couple of years ordered me, I was looking at the Pat McGraths, the Peter Brennans, and of course the Jim Matters and Bobby Ryans, lining all her ladies, and they had a huge win after winning their Hearty Cup. So, I mean, a fantastic occasion. So, to play it at this level, the, the cheer gangs, you see the crowds amalgamated at the back of the stand, they'll be roaring their teams on, and it's, it's memories that will last with you for life, Stephen. Brilliant stuff, Ken, and uh, Martin Burke led Templemore that time, I think, Correct. 78. Correct, you're on the ball, 78. Yeah, that uh, was a huge victory. What would it be like in Cashel this evening if they can win this for the first time ever in the town? Turles, uh, they line out their strong, Ken, with uh, Joe Egan and Tommy Maher in centre feed. Owen Horgan, very good with uh, puck outs and stuff. He was tip, Tip's minor goalie in the win last year. Uh, Tommy Breen in goals for Cashel, another very good keeper. And Bing Curravan, so important at 11 for them with Adam Daly. Match winners on both sides. Match winners on both sides. You know, the great thing about this is, like, you have the, the, the Golden Kilfikels, you have the Borderland Dwellers, you have all the rural clubs involved as well. Do you know? And it's brilliant for every rural club to have players represented on their school teams. So there's a huge amount of clubs involved here. And from that perspective, you know, I think... Uh, huge interest right throughout the county and you know Tip needs this people were saying oh Limerick are taking over uh, their strength and condition is way better than, than every other uh, county in Munster they're gone way ahead of us you know as regards their secondary school coaching and thing now uh, this has been nipped in the bud by the fact that we have two clubs representing uh, two schools representing Tipperary in the Harty Cup final so that has blown that t- miss totally out, out, out of it. So we're, we're absolutely thrilled that both uh, teams are representing Tipperary today, but of course it's going to be a big thing. And here you see the Cashel CBS team coming in to join their panel and to amalgamate here on the sideline. Tremendous spirit there. Look at that all lined up down here, just below us here for the Arona Veen as we prepare for it here today in Turles and uh, the Turles players are making their way over to their panel as well for at this historic occasion here.
Yeah, Ron Aveen here in FPD Simple Stadium. The game about to get underway here. I'm Stephen Gleeson, Ken Hogan alongside me here on Munster GA TV. Hope you're looking forward to this one as much as we are wherever you are in the world this afternoon. We are set to go here. Turles captain there with the yellow helmet on him in centre field just uh, checking out the sun and what angle it's at out there. Partnered alongside Joe Egan from McCarkey Boris, of course, another minor winner with uh, Tipperary last year. Shane Buckley making his way over, another minor winner as well. And uh, in there, it looks like Oshin who is going to start in centre field for Cashel as uh, the referee gets ready to throw in this ball. And they're all set, and here we go. The Hearty Cup final is underway here, and the action is underway. It is the first blood here for Cashel, sent inside by David McGrath. This one just tailing off and just drifting out and wide this time, but uh, Cashel on the ball here. Seriously down through CBS ball fed inside. Turn us here, making a early burst. It's Joe Egan all the way through on the 45. Joe Egan, three of them after him, still going through on the 21. Flicks it inside here. Turn us looking for the ball. Jimmy Lehart here. Oh, just couldn't pull the trigger. Rise at the ball with Jimmy Lehart. And Cash out with a cover. And away they go. Breaking out to Machine O'Donoghue. Feeds that ball on. Jim Buckley in possession now. Jim Buckley angles this up to his front forward line. Breaking ball. Pop it up for Turles, back as far as Owen Horgan, back out to Evan Morris. Holy Cross man sends him back up along the line. Here underneath us in the canal stand, breaking ball here now. Daniel Rossiter tried to control it there, just flipped away though, but uh, the race is on. Cash will come away with it. Off they go on the attack once more. Ball angle up towards Daly up here. And David McGrath, the corner forward, trying to win that ball. Fabian and Ryan in there, but again it's Evan Morris who maps it up and feeds it inside to his captain Tommy Marr. Tommy Marr there loses out this time though. Ball flicked away, Turles break again. Tommy Marr is through and he's won the free out for Turles CBS. <laughs> Nothing Astor given there, serious effort. Yeah, no sign of nerves either, uh, Stephen. Everybody getting stuck in from the very word go, you know. Composed hurling, tremendous hurling. Again, the first score. You know, he's elusive, you know, always. Whoever gets that first score, there'll be an absolutely huge cheer. And Jim Ryan, who's already been on the ball, uh, is surveying his options here. Strikes this one inside. Great puck from Jim. Breaking in there in front of the full forward line. And a little flick on there by Robbie Stapleton. Tried to just connect with the breaking ball, but uh, didn't do so. And it goes out and wide. Long puck out this time from Tommy Breen. Breaking now in front of... Owen O'Connell, the wing back there. Ball down on the deck again here. Aiden Statham trying to forage for it there. Flicked outside. Nice ball out as far as Stephen Walsh. The McCarkey man drives it into the corner. In there towards Robbie Ryan. And just out near the sideline there. Robbie just ran out of a bit of space. And it's still anyone's game here. You can feel the tension though. No score yet in the Hearty Cup. Yeah, and the sun shining. You know, that blazing sun. And I'm sure it's in someone's eyes. Hopefully not the goalkeepers, but um, it's coming straight across into that new stand. Flicked out now, breaking in centre field. Tommy Marr gathers this ball, away he goes now, feeds it inside. Oh, nice little pop pass there, and Turles look to be off the mark here. It's sent inside this time, and they're underway here. Lovely early score, Turles with the first strike of the ball. Oh, it's given as wide yeah, this time. Yeah, it's just helping the post wide, Stephen. Just helping the post wide. Stephen Walsh was... Expecting that one, he has another chance here. Goes to gather it again. Does so cleanly this time. Sent up the line here, challenged by David McGrath, who just got a little nick on his hurley there that time and deflected it out. So still no score here after four minutes of hurling here. And, uh, you know, even enough, isn't it? Both teams are weighing up each other. I'm very surprised, you know, Cashel has settled in pretty well, you know, and attacking there. But um, obviously... Um, the, the sharpshooters on both sides haven't got hold of the ball yet, but that will happen. 
So a line ball over the far side of the field. The captain from Turles Arsfield's Tommy Maher strikes it up along the line. Up to the 45. Lovely take by Robbie Stapleton. Struck high, long, and this one just drifting outside from Robbie. But uh, play being called back, and they're going to have a free in, it looks like. And you know, the referee just uh, having a quick word there. Yeah, he's giving a free in. Yes, yeah, giving a free in. I can see the crowds are still streaming in there, Stephen. You know, it's a nearly start, one o'clock. People can, can get, get caught very easy with the time. Uh, so uh, great to see what a huge crowd. Uh, the arena stand almost full. So. Robbie Ryan, only crossman here. His uncle Brendan is the banished door of Cashel Community School. But he strikes this for Turles CBS all the way inside. It's wide, wide from Robbie Ryan. And uh, and this is what the pressures of, of this type of hurling brings. Huge crowd cheering and all that. Short puck out now from Tommy Breen. Gathered by Gerard Dwyer, brother of Orla, who has found fame down under playing Australian rules football. Ball flicked on there now. It's Aina Ormond who gathers and just left it after him this time. In goes Stephen Walsh, a little flick away there. Gathers this ball, takes it on. Challenged by Ben Curvin over the far side. The layoff to Joe Maher. Just Turles trying to break that half back down. Great tack and great effort by Cashel Community School. Not giving him any room at all here. Joe Maher, another chance here. Feeds it in as far as Tommy Maher. Angled over here towards the full forward line. Breaking ball in there. Good control here. And away goes Jimmy Lahart. Jimmy on the 21 now. Feeds it inside. Looking for Aiden Stakelham. Stakelham is going through here. And he's pulled back in there. And they have a free in. Aiden Stakelham with the free in there. Turles were eager to get an early goal. Yeah, great take from Aiden Stakelham. But a brilliant run from Jimmy Lahart. Set up the opportunity. But a great take in the air from Aiden Stakelham. And surely Robbie Ryan now will open the account after six minutes for Torres CBS for the first score of the game. No mistake this time. And that's the first one of many here. We guess this afternoon. It's tight here and Cashel going into it as underdogs will be pleased that it's just a pint in it so far. Torres. Here they go. Joe Maher now. Joe Maher trying to take it on here. Fed back outside. Owen O'Connell. And Cashel have turned him over there. Ben Corvin, one of the star forwards, helping out the half back line over there at the far side, just on the line. Here in goes Ushino Dunahu. Away he goes with the ball for Cashel. Solo and down the field now. Joe Egan coming to meet him here. Ball fed inside. Cashel with a couple of runners outside him here. If they can move that ball quickly, David McGrath. Half block there. The ball breaking nicely for Aina Armand. Skids off his hurley though. Goes again, Ormond has it now this time and it's just broken away out to David McGrath. McGrath's away on the 21, David McGrath! And just couldn't get the clean shot and the clean strike on the ball. The Turles defence stout-hearted in there and got a hurley in and it trickles wide. Yeah, David's got a couple of opportunities now. You know, he's been on the ball a couple of times. Uh, Castro CBS should have opened their account by this stage. They've had a couple of opportunities. Hasn't just happened for them. Owen Horgan, an experienced keeper now. Surveying his options. Long ball down the field, breaking in there. Oh, fantastic catch in there. Connolly sends it up along the line. Adam Daly, breaking ball in there, in around the house now. Turles quick to react inside now. In there, mopping it up, it's Evan Morris. Ball breaking inside now by Podrick O'Dwyer. But it's won by Fabian Ryan, he's away here. And again, four or five Turles players in on top of him. And that Tigerish group defending just sees it off. Paddy Maher is part of their backroom team and he's been drilling that into them. A feature of this game so far has been the blocks and the hooks, you know. And again, the swarm defence by, by Torres CBS paid dividends there. So, uh, uh, Cashel, a few opportunities but just haven't converted. So, Owen Horgan gets ready to strike this one. His dad was refereeing the match below in Cork in the National Hurling League last night, that's Fergal his ball breaking up here now in front of the half forwards Turles going on the attack but it's a free out for Cashel in there, a push in the back and once more Cashel just settling there, Gerard Dwyer strong in defence gets ready, long ball in now breaking in there in front of Connolly, Ronan Connolly trying to win that ball but again Turles just with a bit of Space and numbers there as the ball is sent out the field. Dylan Fogarty now trying to win it. 
Tommy Maher has it for Turles Aidan Stakelin Sarsfield's man angles it over towards the far side of the field over towards the corner forward Robbie Ryan Robbie Ryan trying to gather it his hurley was being held and just pulled back there so he has a free in Robbie Ryan lethal when he gets the ball and uh, free in there for the hurley being tugged back yeah and you can see Turles CBS they have been very disciplined as regards their tackling haven't given away that free now two frees are conceded by and a brilliant angle ball you mentioned that diagonal ball it's a very hard ball to defend from Aidan Stakel and put Robbie Ryan no mistake at all by Robbie Ryan they're two yeah. to the good after almost 10 minutes hurling here Turles with two early scores Cashel keeping it tight in defence though and Turles having to work hard for those two points ball breaking here this time Ben Corvin angles it into the full forward line sent in there tussle here Evan Morris with Fabian Ryan from Cashel in there helping him out is David McGrath trying to break that ball outside him. Ian Ormond in there as well. Still on the deck, still anyone's ball. Liam Doyle wins at the corner back for Turles. Fed outside here now to Joe Egan from McCarkey. And the minor medalist last year with Tipperary wins the free. He got a goal last year when the sides met at the quarterfinal stage at Borlahan. And Joe Egan wins that free. Struck by Jim Ryan. All the way up the field, breaking in front of Jimmy Lahart in there. And... Crack of the hurley in there. It is going to be a free out for Cashel once more. Dylan Fogarty from Borlahan prepares to strike this. And the defences are in top, Ken. Is that yeah, a strange one. Ronan Meher, or Ronan Connolly, sorry, playing in at on the full forward line as an extra players, uh, the two up front. And they're trying to target him and give him the ball. It's just not working out for him at the moment. Padraig Odewire wins this one now. Fed on here again to Jim Ryan. Sent up along the line up towards Joe Meher. Joe Maher trying to control that ball, but uh, Gerard Dwyer just in with a little flick there, and it is going to be a line ball for Turles CBS. So, Turles, two to the good here, 11 minutes hurling here, struck by Stephen Walsh this time, breaking in around centre field there in front of Daniel Rossiter. Ball still trying to be fed out. No clean running here at the minute as Dara Spillane gathers it. The feathered man moves it on quick now inside. Turles win it back again and away they go though. Fed up by Joe Maher all the way up to the half forward line. Lahart out to challenge to win that ball. But Kieran Bourne with a little flick away there. The golden man just doing enough to knock it out as far as Oshino Dunahu. Trying to control that one again. Back inside. Gerard DeWire, his father Brian won a county medal with Borlahan back here in... 96 as uh, this ball is sent into the half forward line away they go again here now David McGrath has it David McGrath from Cashel the corner forward wins the free in just outside the 21 and this should be a straightforward one for Ronan Connolly the giant captain to pop it over the bar no nerves there is what uh, Ronan Connolly's dad TJ said to us uh, pitch side before the match came yeah and he'd be glad with Ronan Connolly he won a huge ball there that's his buzz their game plan to hit Connolly. Brilliant catch. I felt he deserved a free. He was knocked to the ground. But he gave a great pass to David Dwyer or David McGrath. And now they've won the free. And this will be a huge help now to Cash CBS to open their account uh, with a pint and get things off the ground. So Ronan Connolly prepares and strikes it here at the town end in Turles. And over the bar, no mistake at all. Cashel are off the mark in the Harty Cup final of 2023. Two points to one. Two points to one, and now what a close game. 12 minutes gone, low scoring, tight and hard. Little flick out here from Horgan out as far as Owen O'Connell. Challenged out there now by Fabian Ryan, the full forward, and he was given no room, and he's won a free for Cashel, and they should be back level after this one. Turles just taking too long to move that ball on, and Fabian Ryan winning the free. Yeah, it's amazing. Like, uh, Turles look comfortable enough. Now, uh, Ronan Connolly can equalise this, take his time, put the ball over the bar. I, I, I felt it was a little bit harsh. You know, kind of in the modern day game, people can travel with it, but a bit harder than Ronan Connell. But uh, that's, the, that's the way it goes. He's consistent in his uh, decisions. So, Ronan Connolly can equalise. So, ready to strike this one here. Steady and true. The strike is good. No mistake at all, we're level here. Ronan Connolly, the giant captain after 13, almost 14 minutes of curling, levels it up here, two pints apiece here 
in this one. Owen Horgan, long ball out the far side of the field, into space, breaking over the head of Adam Daly, one of the stars here for Cashel Community School, transferred from Rockwell College and feeds this ball in as far as Shane Buckley. Buckley angles it straight in there into the full forward line, breaking ball, gathered, and away they go now. It's Aina Ormond, just dropped short this time though into the hands of Owen Horgan and fed out to Stephen Walsh. Holy Cross man angles it all the way up, looking for his club mate up there in the full forward line, Robbie Ryan, but Gerard the Wire read his intention, fed outside him here. Cashel on the attack once more. Driven in there just outside the D. Jim Ryan under the dropping ball for Turles. Feeding that ball back outside again here out to Owen O'Connell. O'Connell angles it out far side of the field. Just breaking on the 45 in there. Adam Daly again trying to get clean possession of the ball. One of the stars of the show for Cashel. Joe Maher there heavily strapped with that knee. Injured it a couple of times and... Uh, came back from serious injury to play this year got a bit of a knock in the semi-final but he's up and moving freely today Robbie Stapleton now trying to win this ball from Joe Maher flicked out here Cash will have it away they go good move that time from Dylan Fogarty up to the corner forward away he goes it's Fabian Ryan and Fabian is involved in everything isn't he Ken? Yeah and a huge determination there by Darius Belen and uh, wing back for Cashley. He had no hurry for literally 5-10 seconds and he still managed to win the ball and flick it on with his foot. So you can see how committed these players are on the pitch. Line ball here for the CBS. Struck inside now. Ben Corvin wins it. Little flick out there now and away they go again. It's uh, Fabian Ryan once more on the ball at corner forward wearing 14 and he's sent that ball across there to Adam Daly and they have another free in so a chance for Cashel to go ahead and once more it's Ronan Connolly on the freeze here this is going to be his third strike at the post and will it be his third free he was immense in the semi-final against Art Skull Reach immense today so far too yeah and as you mentioned Fabian Ryan involved in everything a great cross field ball to Adam Daly which won the free for them so Connolly strikes it inside and it is three points to two with Cashel Community School leading the way here. And we're really enjoying this game, even though it's so low scoring. Oh, yeah, it's really tight. This is what it's all about. You know, winner takes all. Everybody's involved in this game. Nothing is won easily. Owen Horgan out the far side of the field, breaking ball. Oh, fantastic fetch out there by Spillane. Fed back inside, breaking now in front of David McGrath. Connolly coming out to gather it. Lovely little send in to David McGrath. Race is on in there. Jim Ryan just did enough to put him off and keep goal side. Turn the centre back just down on his knees there. And ref is probably going to throw this one in. But David McGrath and Jim Ryan there. Jim just went to ground and ref call and play back here. Fabian Ryan in there with Stephen Walsh this time for the breaking ball. Turl is trying to win it and Egan bursting out with it here now. Away they go. Nice clearance from Joe Egan up there to the corner forward. Ball breaks nicely. Oh, they could be in here. No, away from the goals. It's Robbie Ryan and Cashel's defence so good in there. Dylan Fogarty fed back outside to Shane Buckley. Buckley back out again to Odewire. Away they go. Ben Corvin under the dropping ball. Ronan Connolly under the dropping ball as well. It is Cashel who go on the attack here now inside. Curvin being challenged in there by Owen O'Connell trying to keep that ball on as far as Fabian Ryan and away he goes and Fabian Ryan strikes the first one here from play for Cashel Community School a lovely point. First point from play as well and uh, now gone four two ahead and Cashel have a grip of this game Adam Daly absolutely outstanding he's winning every puck out there he's, he's involved in everything out there in the middle of the field Ball up the far side of the field. Daniel Rossiter with a little flick on there, but the ball has gone out over the line. And it is a chance here for Jack Quinlan to steady himself. And uh, the feathered man over there just placing the ball. Three feathered lads, part of the Cashel setup here. The West Tipperary School feathered is in South Tipperary, of course, but uh, that's the hinterland for them here. And he gathers the ball here again. Two of them on him. Daniel Roster does enough to knock the ball away from him. And Turles have a free in here to bring it back to a one-point game again. And 
It is anyone's here. It's yeah. Really Turtle good CBS hurling. have gone out of the game in the last ten minutes. You know, Cashel have dominated the last ten minutes, but now this is a chance. Is it Robbie Ryan is going to have a goal? No, um, it's uh, Captain. Tommy Tommy Maher. A cap- captain's responsibility. Takes a drink, and not an easy free by any means. And Cashel just uh, good in the breaking ball, aren't they? And working yeah, it up the yeah, field. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tiger, Tiger, like in 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 defence. So the Sarsfields man standing over this one here. Tints here, the crowd, the atmosphere, the buzz around FPD Simple Stadium. Sent in this time by Tommy Mayer. It's good. It's accurate, and we're back to one again here in this match. Four points for Cashel three points for Turles here as the keeper gets ready short one from Breen to Quinlan off he goes with this looking once more for Fabian Ryan up there, ball breaking this time for Connolly, Ronan Connolly turns and strikes all the way in and this one just turns outside at the last second and wide this time for Cashel, still a one point game as uh, goalkeeper gets ready again, Owen Horgan dropping this one, oh, oh what, what a, a catch absolutely brilliant over there Kieran Byrne involved as the ball breaks though as far as Robbie Stapleton fed outside, Turles work it into Joe Egan here, a couple of players outside him, he moves that ball on oh Turles are working it through the lines here all the way inside, the final shot going in and going over the bar this time, it's back level Aidan Stakelham of Turles Sarsfields with the score to level it up here after 20 minutes things are beginning to open up a bit Stephen you know, cashing a little bit more direct probably, but a great passing movement. And Aidan Stakelem, who has been heavily involved there, absolutely outstanding score. Even Stephen at the moment, 20 minutes gone. Injury uh, worries there for Cashel at the moment. Uh, this game is helter-skelter. Um, it's not open. It's a huge field in Torres Arceus, but Cashel adapting well uh, to the environment surrounded. Uh, injury looks to be okay, but uh, all to play for. You know, four points each. Every score is fought for. Every ball is fought for. And this is as tight a game as we've seen for a while. Yeah, it's great stuff here. Dara Spillan from Feathered Up and moving about again and back in position. Puck out, sent towards Corvin. Just caught by the sun momentarily. Dropped that ball. Breaking in there. Cashel back to recover it again. In there, fighting for it is Owen O'Connell. Ball won by Cashel. Shane Buckley has it now. Flick back outside again. Scrappy in there. Still the attention to that ball is unbelievable here as Cashel escape with it. Shane Buckley sends it into the corner. Out comes Fabian Ryan. So influential in this game so far. Evan Mertz, the fullback, just holding him off the ball there. Flicked away. Fabian Ryan trying to control it again here now. David McGrath in there waiting for the break of play. But it's won this time by Morris. And a holy cross. Bally Cahillman has won the free out for his school as own Horgan. Just stops to leave this one to Jim Ryan and uh, now it's just been thrown back a little bit here so Horgan with a chance to take it and uh, great tussle there between Fabian Ryan and Evan Morris. Oh my God, that's a really physical tussle and they are going hard ahead. So one Horgan now with a free. Crossfield ball. One of the features of Turles' game across this campaign. Sent over the far side of the field now. Breaking there in front of Aina Ormond and... Liam Doyle as well, ref saying that that one was picked off the deck and it is going to be a free for Turles CBS and uh, Daly just having a chat there with the linesman but the free has been given and it is going to be another chance here for Tommy Maher to see what he can do here with this one. This one is a difficult enough one, Ken, isn't it? Yeah, uh, deemed to have uh, touched the ball on the ground uh, the crowd seemed to disapprove uh, but Tommy Maher Got a great point from about five yards in from here, but um, it's a tough angle. It'll be a wonderful score if he can nail it. Sun in his eyes here, just over the far side, as he strikes it towards Kalainen. All the way in there this time, and that one goes wide. So it is still four points apiece here after 23 minutes hurling. Tense and suiting Cashel possibly at the moment to keep this game tight for as long as possible. All their matches have been very close encounters as Jero Dwyer sends this one up to the forwards. Won by David McGrath now. Fed outside as far as Ronan Connolly dropping inside here this time just out of the reach of Fabian Ryan. Horgan feeds it on here to Ryan. This time it's the six for Turles and 
He's won himself a free out there. Jim Ryan just trying to break three players with that. And they have another free out this time. And it's a feature of the game here where they're getting a few of those frees yeah, from there. Yeah, and that was fortunate enough. Like, he was under a bit of pressure. I didn't think there was a foul. But in fairness, the referee is closer to the, the scene than me. Sent down the feed now. Breaking here in front of the half-backs. Won by Dylan Fogarty. And the Borlahan man bursts out with this ball. Loses it though to Daniel Rossiter. Rossiter trying to feed it on again to Oshino Donahue. Back out now this time to Jimmy Lahart as he drops this all the way inside and tailing off and wide this time from Jimmy Lahart. Still four apiece and the surroundings of Turles just with the forwards finding it hard to find their range here but play rolls on. Back out now as far as Joe Egan. Fed on again here to Stephen Walsh. Walsh drops this ball inside all the way in there in front of Robbie Ryan. Gathers it and turns and strikes over his shoulder. And this once more drifts off and wide this time. And I suppose they're not used to playing in Turles all the time, Ken. They're used to Borlahan and Mallow. Is, is it a little yeah, different? Yeah, and there's always a swirling breeze down to that goals. You know, it's particularly in the month of January or February. It's not easy to hit those goals with the sun in your eyes. And Robbie would have had the sun in his eyes, so... That will come. Long puck out this time from Tommy Breen. Breaking over there. Little flick on by Jimmy Lahart. Cashel trying to forage for that ball. They have it again here now. Halfback's doing very well for them. Shane Buckley in possession. The Nakavilla man moves that ball on inside. And away they go here. Long strike from Oshino Dunahu. It's dropping this time and dropping out and wide as well. Still four apiece. And... Both teams with plenty of shots on target, but uh, yeah, just both, off target. Yeah, four or five wides each at the moment, you know, but it, it was worth a go for O'Sheen. He's very workmanlike there at wing forward. Owen Horgan again struck down the field in front of Dylan Fogarty, though. Breaking ball there, and the Cashelman just got a little nick on that ball. Darius Belan foraging for possession there, so to Joe Egan for Turles. Ball flicked out now. Robbie Stapleton fed back outside. Tommy Maher has a go here from long range, and how about that from the captain? What a strike! Tommy Maher of Turles Sarsfields, super. Pine to the game so far, Stephen. Brilliant strike. You can see the way he strikes the ball, beautiful style, and what a pint, what an inspiration pint from your captain. Breaking ball up there now. This time it's won by Turles again. Getting a bit of room here now. It's Rossiter. Feeds it inside into that dynamic duo in there. Robbie Ryan and Lahart. Robbie Ryan angles it across here. Looking for Joe Maher. Joe Maher does well. Holds onto that ball. What a block. Absolutely brilliant by Oshino Donahue. And Cashel turn it over. Joe Maher had the post in his eyes. And Oshino Donahue got the hurley in with a brilliant block. Superb from the Cashel defender as Turles try to build once more. Stephen Walsh feeds it on as far as Maher. Tommy Maher shoving away in Ormond there. Angles this over the far side. Ormond did enough to put him off and it's gone out over the line at the far side. Oshino Donahue can. What a brilliant block. Such an underrated skill. Yeah, and they're both himself and in Ormond. Both wing forwards working brilliantly for Cash and CBS and cutting off the supply to the to the Turles forwards because their the half backs from Turles are under such pressure trying to clear the ball. As you see with Tommy Maher, a fine earlier ball went out over the sideline. So Cashel with this strike over the far side of the field sent in here now, breaking in front of Owen O'Connell. O'Connell trying to gather it here back to Jim Ryan. Jim Ryan straight back up along that far side of the field and it is going to be another line ball Gerald O'Dwyer will prepare to strike this one here brother of Orlo O'Dwyer who played Camogie and ladies football for tip and Australian rules as well of course and Ger sizing up this one now taking his time about it here centre back cuts this ball all the way down the field good ball breaking in there in the 45 one back by the CBS, Jim Ryan, angles it into space here. Race is on here and it just goes out over the line once more. Aiden Stakem just a little bit too far away from where the ball was breaking to get there in time. And that is the bonnish tour of Cashel down there. Brendan Ryan, a great half back in the day for his club, Holy Cross, Belly Cahill. And teaching in Cashel for a few years, teaching woodwork over there. He's the bonnish door. Directs Dylan Fogarty to cut it up along the line, which he does up here now. Again, Jim Ryan, another Holy Cross man, wins this ball and 
trying to burst out there, challenged by David McGrath, fed back outside again. This one just over the line and the Tigerish fighting for everybody, <laughs> sending it out over the sidelines here. A lot of line balls here, but uh, it's still it's still very entertaining, I think. Still very entertaining because both teams are, you know, tooth and nail. Every ball is matters and you know, uh, Cashel are working extremely hard up front and they are reading the game brilliantly at the back. But Turles have put a few great movements together, got a couple of great scores through Tommy Maher uh, but, and Aidan Stakeland. But this is another clearance. Here we come. Corvin with that caught into the wind, breaking out there now. Corvin going to have another go here. The Golden Man trying to get down and gather that ball. They got to a county under 21 semi final recently there, but just knocked off. In that, they did win the West, though, and Corvin, one of the key players for gold in the last few years. But uh, this time, Turla CBS have turned it over, and Podrick O'Dwyer from Killinall will get a chance. Brother of Killian's, obviously an All Ireland uh, winner as well, so great pedigree here in both these teams. Away he goes, Podrick O'Dwyer cuts it up along here. Corvin wins it, trying to. Yes, some sort of an advantage there and the ref didn't see any accruing and it's going to be another chance for Ronan Connolly here to see what he can do. Can he level it up again for Cashel as we approach half time? This is probably playing into Cashel's hands that it's so tight, Ken, because uh, they really did fear an early Turles goal and their confidence soaring. But that hasn't happened. Yeah, and this could be, you know, it could be the last play of the game. If it goes at five all, I think overall it's a fair a fair reflection in the game but it will open up in the second half when players get tireder this one struck inside oh. just short keeper in there just looking on and it is played out as far as Jim Ryan now away he goes Jim Ryan cuts it up along the line here and ball pucked is the last act of this half just below us here Ken a moment ago I was looking at Eamon Buckley uh, Patrick McCormack, of course, who's goalkeeper for Turles Sarsfields for many years, and Paddy Mayer. They're part of the management team for Turles CBS. They were deep in thought there because tactically, Cashel are doing everything right. Yeah, yeah, Cashel are doing everything right now. Uh, uh, I think Ronan Connolly will be disappointed with that last free. Um, he had an opportunity to make it a, a draw game. Um, I suppose it's five points to four. It's all to play for. But uh, Turles obviously going in that little bit ahead. Uh, both managements on the sideline, very cool and calm, watching the game, weighing up their options. But I think in the second half, this game will open up. We'll have a more free-flowing game. And it'll be interesting to see how things will pan out. But five points to four, very close uh, so far. Very tight game, all to play for. Great stuff. Ken Hogan here alongside me, Stephen Gleeson. We're just going to uh, reflect for a moment here and then we'll have some half-time analysis here. But at half-time, it is Turles who lead five points to Cashel's four in the Harty Cup final. We'll take a quick break. Stay tuned.
Welcome back to FPD Simple Stadium. It is tense and ferocious here in Turles at the moment. Five points to four, Turles a leading cash line. I'm delighted to be joined by Stevie O'Donnell here of Tip Midwest Radio. And Stevie, this has been an immensely tense first half. Really exciting. Yeah, a lot of um, tense uh, players but, uh, as well in the early stages of the game. I, I just happened to notice that both defences seem to be in well on top. That the forwards of each forward, casual community school forwards, they weren't getting as much space. In fact, they were getting very little space. There was an awful lot of intensity in the marking of the board defences, casual defence and the taller CBS defence. So I think that when I was only talking to Shawnee Great and Francis Cotton down in the commentary box earlier, we were just saying to ourselves that scores are going to be hard to come by. Mm. And if you look at it, there's only two points from play really for Tulla CBS, CBS. There's only one point from play for Cashel Community School, and that came on the 18th minute when Fabian Ryan was put through, scored off his left hand side by a good work again by Ben Corvin. But you see, the only thing is, Stephen, again, I think it's really in the second half that this game is really going to open up. That's my own opinion. I genuinely do think that there's so much at stake in the first half that you could see that scores were going to be hard to come by because again as we say go back to what we were saying the tight marking and defense you could see that there was no space given yeah yeah and uh when any player did get a bit of room there was a couple coming in fast so it was struck wide you know there was a lot of yeah wide uh, what I, they'd be putting over the bar yeah what i noticed as well they, they seem to be rushing into their their shots they're creating a couple of scores and they're creating chances but they're not Converting, you know, that there's a few shots that have dropped into the keeper or maybe drop shot. You know, again, that goes down to nerves. But I, again, Stephen, I really do think it's going to be maybe 10, about 10 minutes into the second half. I think we're going to see a different type of game. But for casual community school, I was just surprised to see uh, Roland Connolly going in full forward, staying inside with Fabian, maybe just drifting out. I don't know, I don't think that that's working because I think that Roland is more suited to midfield. He's an He's a very, very good midfielder. I think we may see a change there in the second half. That's what I'd be expecting. So do you think that they will bring Ronan Connolly back out there and just try and upset the Turles momentum? Yeah, I do. I really do. And I think that that would work. But again, it's all down to the players now. Get him in at halftime, Brendan Ryan, and he's going to talk, obviously, now to his team inside Tulla CBS, the very same. They're going to tell him, let's settle down. OK, there's only, what, four, uh, four pints for Cashel Community School, five pints for Tulla CBS. There's only the pint in it. I really do think that it's going to open up in the second half. I really do. It has to. Uh, the Turles full forward line there, Robbie Ryan and Jimmy Lehart, you know, 3-7 in the semi-final between them. They've been reined in there and they haven't got much space compared to what they're used to. Yes, and, and to be fair to Jack Quinlan and, um, you know, uh, Keen Ryan and Keen Burnham inside the full back line for the Cashel Community School, they have been told, this is your job, tight, not just as in tight, but watertight. Don't give them a space. That's what's happening. But then when they do get a, a chance inside, when they do create a bit of space, they seem to kind of panic on the ball a little bit. And again, that's all down to now. So the young lads, it is the Hearty Cup final. There was a lot of uh, tension, I suppose, with the build-up to it. And there was a lot expected. You can see here today, Stephen, there must be, what, 15, 14, 15 or 1,000 people here. It's phenomenal. It's great. So there's going to be a lot of pressure on those players. But now in the second half, hopefully the pressure will just lift off the shoulders and get out and play hollow. Yeah, and uh, who has impressed you for, you know, Cashel? in there apart from uh, Fabian Ryan that you mentioned and Ronan Connolly. Yeah, was. Fabian was coming out a bit all right, but I'm just, I suppose really, if you look at the backs, first of all, you had um, Jack Quinlan inside, you had uh, Darius Belay and uh, the two feathered lads there. Uh, I think just, they were really shown very early in the early stages of the game. They were really shown for the ball. They were coming out with a lot of confidence, a lot of strength. Um, then, uh, of course, Joe Dwyer, I thought Joe was really playing well. Now, they were trying to man-mark, but at the same time, trying to win to get the ball, they were trying to just put a, a very good ball down to the forwards. But then, that didn't work at times. There was the high ball was dished in, but for a small player inside, for a casual community school, when it wasn't going to work, you know, I know that they have a couple of good players that will be out into the half-hour line and the bigger men, but Adam Daly is not really in the game as much as we thought he would. That's a big disappointment for casual community school so far. 
he's one of the key players. We're expecting to see more of him on the ball. Likewise with Robbie Ryan, I suppose, and Jimmy Lehart for them. But um, who's impressed you for Turles? For me, I'd have to say Jim Ryan. I thought yeah, very good. I think Jim Ryan is really standing out. I think he's, he's like a leader. He's like the conductor of the orchestra, really. He's calling the shots. A, a lot of stuff is going through him. A lot of the ball is going through him. But I think his distribution is quite good. The reading of the game for Jimmy, I think, is very, very good. But as you say, Stephen, it's a lot of this now. And I spoke on, on radio yesterday morning on this on Tip Midwest. And Michael Dundon made the point. He says, Stephen, you're going to see a lot of tight, tight marking. That's exactly, precisely what we're seeing here today. A lot of tight marking. So, again... We have to look to the forwards now, because they are the guys, the midfield forwards, they are the guys that are going to win the game for either side. Who's yeah. it going to be? It's <laughs> going to be a good one. Isn't the, isn't the point almost, you know, a huge release here? When it, when they got a point from Clay and we saw Tommy Ma with a huge score, it yeah. just, everybody lifted. It did, and it, you know what? It lifted the team. It lifted the spirit of the team, but it also lifted the crowd. You could hear the roar from the crowd when he got that point. But so far, only two points to one from Clay. Two to Tullo CBS, one from Casual CBS. Disappointing, they're dependent on freeze. I hope that's not going to be the trend that's going to continue in the second half. I really don't, because I want to see the pressure being lifted off their shoulders and go out and play the, to the best of their ability. And again, I want to see a little bit more now if we can from the uh, both sets of hearts, but definitely I think we have seen very little so far of Adam Daly. The supply ball is not going into him, he's been tightly marked in when it comes in, but however now this Castle Community School are coming out onto the field again, um, yeah, I'm expecting a really good second half here, Stephen. Great stuff. Stevie O'Donnell of Tip Midwest Radio, many thanks for that and we see that the teams are back out on the field and we are ready to go here. What an exciting second half in store here. It is all to play for just one point in it at the break. And as Stevie O'Donnell said there, he's hoping that it'll all open up in the next few minutes. And if it does open up here, it is going to be, you know, a really high scoring game with the quality of forwards that we have on both sides players in position and ready to go here the referee just looking that everybody is lined up where they should be and that they're all in position and away we go the second half is underway straight away Shane Buckley trying to gather that ball flicked in there again though and in they go foraging like mad looking for it Cash will have it somehow out of that mess fed out as far as Bourne here back here again from Ina Ormond back to the hands of Jack Quinlan and worked up again here now into Shane Buckley inside into the full forward line this is promising here ball just flicked on outside there Jim Ryan did enough just to get that ball away though for Turles and away he goes storming out from defence here the centre back from Holy Cross away he goes lovely ball up along the line towards Joe Maher Joe just taken off he's hurley there by uh, Gerald Wire over the far side of the field and uh, Joe just limping away a little there looks to just be feeling the, the knock on the knee just after that he's carrying an injury Ken Hogan is back here in place and uh, he's just been carrying an injury for a while and uh, he'll hope to just stay fish and see this yeah, out Yeah, just goes to show you the determination of the man you know, to carry that leg he's limping his way through it now he's walking back out again so strong player and a dominant player for, for Toro CBS Fed outside here this time, ball breaking in front of Jimmy Lahart. He's away now. Challenge comes in from Kieran Bourne and the defence. Steps, yeah. Just held him up there and wasn't given any space at all once more. And Cashel with the free out here. Dylan Fogarty standing over the ball, ready to strike this one. Goes along with it all the way down the field, breaking in front of the full forward line. Ball spilt out there this time. Liam Doyle going to gather it now. It's won this time by Daly though. Adam Daly showing what he can do here. This time just angled away from the goals and it's drifted out and gone wide from the All-Ireland minor medalist last year. Super player, but uh, just wide on this occasion. Still 5-4. Turles break out to the 65 now. Worked out as far as Tommy Maher. And Tommy has won a free there. The challenge from Ian Ormond and Oshin O'Donoghue. Uh, just too robust. Yeah, Tommy Maher, beautiful hurler. Uh, Cashel's, or Torres' half-back line, strong. Jim Ryan, Stephen Walsh particularly, very strong. And, of course, Tommy Maher strikes this one. In there, breaking inside, just knocked away there by 
Kieran Byrne with uh, the right hand and the hurley won back by Joe Maher though Joe Maher out as far as Robbie Ryan and Robbie Ryan sends this in just outside the post this time it's still five points to four 32 on the clock here sharp puck out great strike by Robbie great strike it's just not go working for him but it, he'll just have to stay at it Jack Quinlan sent down to the half forward line breaking in there and gone out over the line this time it's going to be a line ball for Turles CBS who are playing towards the town end and their school is uh, just down a bit further outside the right hand side there past Turles Greyhound Stadium and you arrive at Turles CBS taken quick this time by Cashelda McGrath to Daly and Daly sends this in and just away from him this time wide at one side of the post and wide at the other now yeah and I think he knows he shouldn't have uh, taken that option uh, it was always going wide the first one he had a great chance this, this one was a, a hit and hope type thing hit four points in the semi-final against Ard Skull Reach, including the winning point that day Adam Daly though will need close watching for the rest of the game by Turles CBS who have this free out here just on the 45 placing the ball nice and steady there and ready to go the players all just moving back here Turles still holding that one point advantage Jim Ryan sends it up the field breaking up there in front of Joe Mara but it's taken away from him and away go Cashel this time great play by O'Dwyer back down the field breaking ball in now in front of the full forward line little flick on there and again the defence of one school or the other out on top it's fed out to Joe Egan now Joe Egan away on to Aidan Stakelum ball breaking down there Joe Egan trying to go again as uh, they all scrummage out there in around the 65 waiting for a little flick away here everything fought for everything needed here one ball can make the difference in this match Turles have it. Away they go. It's Tommy Marr. The captain strikes it in this time. All the way in. And this time, play has been called back, I think. And it is going to be a free this time. It had just trickled out and wide. So uh, they're retaking it. Kenny's going to have a shot at it. Yeah, Tommy Marr highly influential now in the first four or five minutes of the second half. Seems to be taking the game by the scruff of the neck. Very narrowly wide, but was foul on the way in. Right in the 65-yard line. Centre of the goals. Great opportunity to put two there. And two is a big lead at the moment in this type of game. So here he goes here. Struck inside. Five foot ten. He's won Fela under 14. He's won under 16, 17, 18, 19 and under 21 titles with his club. Uh, Turles Sarsfield's all county titles and in the match day programme he says the biggest influence on his career is Redzer O'Grady another former tip player ball down the field won by Ben Corvin though struck inside by Corvin and that's a lovely response Cashel straight down the field bring it back to one point again yeah and that's a great a great score and that's the thing is begin to open up Stephen game is opening up now a bit free more free flowing and Cash will be hoping to get Ronan Connolly into the game. Ball breaking here this time again. It's uh, the half back line there, very strong. All through Jack Quinlan this time for Cashel, trying to win that ball against Jimmy Lahart there, who's in challenging. And Tommy Marr again just putting the pressure on the man in possession. Adam Daly this time had that ball, and Adam Daly just slow to let go of that ball as well. And He's eager to show what he can do here now. You know, he's a player yeah, he's of huge promise. highly involved. Promise. And uh, again, Bill Flanagan is warming up there for Toro CBS on the sideline. He's coming in, actually. So that change being made. And it looks like Jimmy Lahart is the player being withdrawn this time. As, Jimmy was uh, involved in the game. In fairness to him, he was in heavily involved in the game. So obviously a tactical switch change that uh, they think the mere more need more physicality probably up front Stephen so change being made there as Gerald O'Wire strikes this ball all the way inside but angled just outside the post and wide so it's still a one pointer here 37 minutes on the clock 6 points playing 5 this time breaking ball over the far side of the field won by Turles now fed into Joe Egan away he goes for them around him now challenge comes in from Adam Daly there and Cashel have turned it over with all the pressure Shane Buckley works it on up along 
Turles back into Forage to try and win it back again. Aiden Stakelum now sent out here. Half pull there by Dylan Fogarty, but it is won back by Gerard O'Wire, towering centre back here. His dad Brian, a great player with Borlahan back in the days, down the field. The other centre back now about to shine. Jim Ryan strikes this way back up the field. Kieran Byrne from Golden underneath the dropping ball for Cashel. Fed out as far as Adam Daly. Daly trying to forage there. Three Turles lads on him, but he's away. Good play here by Adam Daly. Oh, he's found a bit of room here now. Feeds the ball onto the man in the better position. It's David McGrath. David McGrath going all the way through. Looking for a goal here. David McGrath, little flick. And we'll see what the referee is going to give here. It is going to be a free in, I think, here. Is he signalling that uh, there was a, um, a tackle on David McGrath that was illegal? Great advantage by Eamon Stable. You know, as referee, uh, mid of the field, a free gave the advantage, brilliant run by David McGrath, ran right through, was fouled eventually, now we're going to have an equaliser, probably from Ronan Connolly, six all, all to play for, but this game is opening up, players are beginning to move a little bit freer, uh, they're let, they're, the shackles are gone now, and the game is opening up to be a, a, a classic, because this is one hell of a, of a game, you can see what's at stake here for both teams, and Ronan Connolly will probably level it up now. So, it is indeed the equaliser. Six points apiece here. Cashel and Turles going all the way down to the home straight here. Very little between the two sides here. Ronan Connolly, former Tipperary minor hurling captain, shining here today on those frees. Ball sent down the field now, breaking in front of Dylan Fogarty. Three Turles lads in on him like lightning. Fed outside this time to Daly. Starting to shine in this match. All the way up the field, breaking ball up there in front of the half forward in Ormond, but it is Turles who have it. Liam Doyle working it outside him here now as far as Joe Egan. Joe Egan on again with this little pop pass outside. Oh, good play by Turles and Joe Egan goes all the way through here, holding on to that ball. He's inside here this time and the free is being given there. Adam Daly just went in with a little tug of the jersey tactical from Adam Daly not to let him into a goal scoring position and uh, he felt he had a little option there but to uh, concede that free and it's uh, a likely point here instead of a goal perhaps. Yeah, ramaging run there by Joe Egan, you know, right through the middle worked hard to get in there um, players are beginning to open up, move with the ball, create positions and I won't be surprised if there's a goal in the next couple of minutes because the, the play is opening up Robbie Another puts it over and it is a one up once more for Turles CBS as Robbie Ryan the nephew of the manager of Cashel Community School Brendan puts it over the bar here we go again now Turles have possession again on the attack sent in there to that dangerous full forward line Robbie Ryan has a bit of room Robbie turns and strikes this in and he's put this one wide and again when you're not used to getting any space and then you get that maybe a too much all of a sudden yeah he's actually too anxious because he's winning brilliant ball he's a beautiful striker he has great pace and it's just going up with the post for him. He's a young hurler, it's one of those days, but he's still there, he's three points on the board and he will still contribute before the game is over. Seven points to six here. Ball breaking over the far side of the field and away they go, looking forward. Ref is just going to throw this one in here. Cashel set to go, Cashel Community School opened its doors to students in 1994 and reached the Munster Senior B final then in 97 and 98 and have rose through the ranks winning the B competition a couple of years all under Brendan Ryan and here they are in the Harty Cup final just one point down against Turles who were on the attack Bill Flanagan the sub, oh away he goes, great run by Bill Flanagan, little flick in there as far as Robbie Ryan, but Cash will recover and away they go out from defence this time, fed on to Oshino Dunahoo, back out they go, Shane Buckley now, Keen Ryan, good strike here by Keen, dropping all the way in around the house here, dropping in there and the keeper has to come out and he's conceded a 65 in there. Wasn't sure if there was another forward lurking in there. Tried to control it and knocked it out for the 65. Owen Horgan back into the goals. Yeah, he'll be a bit disappointed about that, Owen. You can see he lifted his head to the heavens as if to say, why did I do that? But, you know, when you're under pressure, ball coming in, the sun in your eyes, and you're trying to make things uh, 
uh, safe. Uh, went out for 65. Now, Ronan Connolly hasn't been in the game hugely in play, but he's such a crucial man for, for Cashel, uh, particularly on the place balls. This is a chance to level the game again after 42 minutes. We were talking to his dad, TJ, pitch side before the game. Of course, he was on the county winning and Munster winning club side back in 91 when Cashel uh, went to the Munster final that time and it's Ronan who sends this in and over the bar. Great strike. Oh, great strike. Great strike. A very important strike for Cashel. Draw game. Seven all. Such. Substitutions been made on the side again. Um, is it Aiden, Aiden Stakelem who was again well involved? Yeah, and James Doyle from Holy, Holy Cross. Cross. Yeah. On the field of play. Seven each, 43 on the clock here now as that change is made. So Torres are rolling the subs. Out as far as Podrick O'Dwyer. Off he goes here. Sends it on as far as Tommy Marr. Tommy back to Jim Ryan. Jim Ryan with the long ball down the field. Jer O'Dwyer with a hurley up there and flicks it away. Good centre back play by the Cashelman as he gathers that ball somehow brilliant stuff and away he goes Jero DeWire and strikes it over the far side of the field here now races on for this one in arm and in he goes to challenge there looking for that breaking ball inside now it is Stephen Walsh from McCarkey trying to gather it there in arm and from Golden goes to ground and the Cashel man is down on the deck there and I think he's won a free he gets a bottle of water for his troubles <laughs> and he'll be thrilled with that yeah and a strange free um, I felt uh, a yellow card I think it's a bit tough on on, on on Stephen Walsh there yellow card but it's right in front of the Cashel uh, dugout now this is a tester for Ronan you know right in the sideline I suppose what would you say 40 metres out um, Stephen yeah, it's a difficult uh, one yeah 45 difficult one a pressure one uh, this is this is where you make your hay. So here we go. It is Ronan Connolly. His uh, big brother Owen was part of the Tipperary Senior Hurling uh, team over the last couple of years and is on fringes yeah. of that as Ronan sends this in. Former Tip Minor captain Ronan Connolly points here for Cashel Community big, School. Big score, big score, big pressure score. That will give Connolly huge confidence as well. I expect him now to have, be heavily involved in the last quarter of the game because that's a great score to nail a score under pressure there for that. To put Cashel a point ahead. Now it's really, the pressure's really on. Change being made for Turles CBS. Robbie Ryan is off and Dara Kelly of Eroge oh. and Akarty is on. So both Jimmy and uh, his teammate gone here now as the ball breaks in around centre field one in there this time by Dylan Fogarty fed back outside Adam Daly this time Daly heads away with this sent on up along another 10 yards Coravan trying to win it Coravan sends it in around the house now keeper comes out and is assured under this one sends it back out the field from whence it came, one again by Daly. Daly with another chance here, goes back inside this time, pulls on the ball in there. Two Turles lads looking for it. Forage in like mad for possession. Everyone battling for anything here. Ball spills away there. Turles have it again. The Hurley comes in, the little flick. Ref is stopping play here. Couple of players have lost their helmets there. Uh, Fabian Ryan just putting his helmet back on there. The Cashel man as everyone on the field gets a breeder so Robbie Ryan and Jimmy Lahart off for Turles and uh, Flanagan and Dara Kelly and James Dial on big changes on that Turles team they're yeah. not hanging around yeah and I think in fairness to Robbie Ryan while he put a few balls wide at, he scored three frees and he's a huge danger there so the changes have been rolled by the uh, Turles CBS management ball sent in there now in as Turles go on the attack. They haven't got the scores they were expecting to in this match. Putting up huge scores right across the season, but not today. They've been held to seven points here by Cashel. The underdogs going into this, and the City of the Kings will rejoice tonight if they can win this one. Gerard O'Wire standing over it. His big sister Orla, of course, an absolute star 
in Tipperary and in Australian rules and Ger is proven what he can do on the hurling field here today putting himself in the shop window for tip teams sent down the field breaking ball up there now in front of Ben Coravan away they go again ball still loose to anyone's here now as it's just flicked on there by Ben Coravan little flick as it just comes out trying to gather that ball and get it in hand here again all foraging where's it going to break is the question here still looking for it there Turl is trying to work it out from defence now Tommy Maher the captain from Sarsfield is trying to do so but it's won by Oshin O'Donoghue and the Castleman sends it in and the City of the Kings rejoices here it is Cashel Community School who are two points up in the Harty Cup final with less than 15 minutes to go. Yeah, less than 15 minutes to go, 12 minutes to go in actual fact. So Torres under a little bit of pressure, great puck out from Old Horgan though, finding Stephen Walsh. Fed on inside here to Liam Doyle, back in there again, turned over this time. It is Cashel starting to play with a bit of more swagger and a bit of freedom here. David McGrath, McGrath half blocked there brilliantly by Bill Flanagan from McCarkey Boris. Fed back out here again though, it's Adam Daly who strikes this inside, in there, breaking ball in there, in front of Owen Horgan. Horgan hits it high, 50-50 ball out there as Joe Egan comes out and wins it. Joe Egan now, back in to Jim Ryan. Jim Ryan on as far as Padraig O'Dwyer. The killing all man sends it up the house all the way up there in front of Jack Quinlan's side. Gerard O'Dwyer again, immense across the afternoon today back down the field Ben Coravan gathers Ben Coravan strikes all the way in from Ben Coravan it's wide this time though it is still nine for Cashel Community School seven for Turles CBS 49 on the clock ball breaking outside here now it is Kieran Bird trying to control that ball little flick back in there Adam Daly's away Paddy Mayer and Eamon Buckley not happy in that one on the sideline they thought they should have had a line ball there but it is going to be a free for Cashel here it looks like Dylan Fogarty took a bit of a blow to the helmet there and uh, looks to be quite hurt after that the referee is in there yeah yeah and this is all playing into Cashel CBS's uh, hands because um, tough tackle there um, obviously making no inroads here at the moment seven points you know there were five at half time they've only scored two in the second half I thought things had opened up a little bit for for Turner CBS in the second half but uh, you know uh, Gerald DeWire absolutely dominant Jack Quinlan dominant there uh, and particularly their two wing backs so tigerish but Ronan Connolly um, on a calm day, Stephen, you know, you'd say a young fella, you know, on his own 65, will he make it? But I think he will make the distance whether he gets the accuracy or not. But if he could score this, it would be a huge point uh, for Cashel CBS going, out, going down the road with 10 minutes to go. Oh, this will be massive here if it goes over the bar. Ronan no. strikes it high this time, but it's tailing off and it has gone wide. So it's still just two points and two excellent teams here giving their heart and soul to this all across the last few years just to get to this stage and now is the time to shine with a few minutes left ball sent down the field won by Shane Buckley now back up the field with this all the way up in front of Adam Daly Adam Daly into Ben Coravan Coravan has it he's away Ben Coravan strikes it in here and oh it's back into play again just off the upright and Away they go once more. Owen O'Connell now sends it back out the field. The Lockmore man gets that ball up to the 65. Joe Maher has it. McCarkey man with a bit of room in front of him now. Feeds it on here as far as his club mate Bill Flanagan. Flanagan coming out there to gather it. Trying to hold on to that ball. Kieran Byrne from Golden in there challenging him. It is won this time by Aina Ormond and the Golden Kalfikal man is away fed back outside again to Dara Spillane, struck long down and top of the 45 breaking ball in front of David McGrath Hurlis have it back though, here they go now this time, up the field towards Joe Egan, Joe Egan trying to hold on to that ball, has it in hand feeds it back outside, oh what a block, absolutely brilliant block and a pull along the ground, Oshino Donahue, take a bow here we go, back up the field. Ronan Connolly feeds it out to Adam Daly. Adam Daly strikes, ah oh, yes! What a score! Adam Daly, a block, a strike, 
Unbelievable, Ken. Brilliant score, brilliant win by uh, Ronan Connolly's becoming more influential. He's put a, a score on the board for Ben Corrivan. And now he has supplied the assist there. But what a score from Adam Daly. But this is now a big lead, three-point lead on Horgan now. There's urgency in his play. Struck long this time. Down to the full forward line. Turles needs scores. They're drifting out of this game. It's Joe Maher who has it. Joe Maher meets a brick wall in Gerard De Wire. Fed back outside again. Cashel with it. Another half block, but Turles with the shot, and Turles have got the score. It is Turles who are just working their way back into this slowly now. They're going to need more than that, though. They have eight points on board here. Good play that time. Yeah, Joe Maher's keeping Turles in the game. He's working so strong. He's carrying that leg injury, but massive run for him there. Uh, to supply that point, great score though, great score. And that score from plays is important because it makes it that dangerous two-point game with seven minutes left, Stephen. So another chance here for the CBS to build an attack. 10-8. Sent inside here now. Breaking ball, gathered out there. Egan's away. Oh, good run here. Joe Egan trying to feed that ball back outside him and uh, Cashel concede. The free this time with four of them on him. Joe Egan, though, got a goal in the quarterfinal when they met in last year's competition at Borlahan, and he was bursting through the middle there that time. They have a free. Yeah, the two, Joe Egan, uh, the two Mike Carkey men, and Joe Maher, you know, they're really holding the ball up there. They're trying to make things happen. Now, this is an important free for Tommy Maher, the captain, because it makes it a one point game. So, standing over this one just outside the 45. Over the bar. It's a 1.1. One. Oh, something else. Some drama here. 54 on the clock. We're told the official attendance today is 7,283. And I'm sure there's loads of kids over there at the far side dreaming about being on the field of play as well in this one. Just six minutes left, Ken. Yeah, it is really an agonizing game because both teams are on the threshold of greatness here. Uh, forever remembered. Uh, injury problems for Cashel and they can't afford to be losing anyone now. Is it a blood sub? It is, it seems. The referee is saying a blood sub is Ronan Connolly. They can't afford to have him off the pitch for too long. They need to work to work on him straight away and get that whatever wound it is cleaned up because uh, to have him off the pitch in the last vital five, six minutes of the game uh, cannot be advised. So someone's dealing with him, whoever's dealing with him. So Ronan Connolly just going off the field on the far side for Cashel as this ball is dropped in around centre field. Won this time by James Doyle. The Holy Cross man feeds it on here as far as Bill Flanagan. Flanagan turned over though by Aina Ormond. Turles have it again. Out as far as Robbie Stapleton as he sends it skyward. Lovely strike by Robbie Stapleton of Turles Sarsfields. He's got a pint here and it is level with five to go. We have a game, we have a game. What a score from Robbie Stapleton, but the substitutes are getting involved. They're working very hard there for Turles CBS. Breaking ball here again. Cashel trying to win that ball here through Oshin O'Donoghue. Little flick on there, two of them in on him and O'Donoghue does brilliantly to keep that ball motoring. Back here again, he's back involved, challenged by Tommy Maher this time. One of Turtle CBS's best players. Ball spills away from them all. Back to Kieran Byrne. Byrne just kicks it along the deck here. Gerard De Wire, safe pair of hands all through this match. Oh, what a ball by Gerard De Wire. David McGrath this time. All the way in, brilliant play, brilliant play, brilliant play. by Cashel. Jero the Wire giving an exhibition. Exhibition of hurling and Connolly's back in now. They need to get him on the pitch. What a wonderful score. What a wonderful score by David McGrath. Brilliant score. And Ronald Connolly introduces under sub pre, but this is all to play for. There's plenty to play with yet, and Turles are beginning to play with a bit of freedom. They're going at this game now, so it's all to play for. 11, 10, 56 on the clock. Long ball driven in towards the Turles forwards. Hurley up there and knocked away this time as Cashel just try and recover this. Turles have it though, fed inside by Dara Kelly. In Ormond this time, wins it back, fed outside. Here he goes, Ormond with the attack inside now. 
Turles with the free man in there though as they try and break out once more out past the 45 good run in here and uh, just ran, running out of space there was Jim Ryan the centre back for Turles CBS immense all day as Turles bring on another sub this time it's Sean Hayes of McCarkey and going off is Daniel Rossiter of Dourless Oak so Turles just changing most of their forwards yeah, and you can see, obviously, the, the management have faith and the players they're using. Uh, they're bringing in subs to do things and to do things as well as they possibly can. Brilliant work from the forward line there in Turles. Getting the hook in and, on, on, on Jim Ryan. And now, this is going to be have to be smart the way he's going to play this line ball with a couple of minutes left. McGrath. And he, and he does exactly that. Short. Gathers it back. McGrath oh. strikes oh. all the way in. Just short. Breaking ball in there, full forward, trying to get a little flick on it inside. It's Fabian Ryan, and Fabian Ryan just in there, lurking all the time. He's been brilliant here this afternoon, but it is uh, going to be called back there, back outside for a throw in. Ball in again here now, flicked out. It is Ronan Connolly. Connolly trying to find a bit of space, bit of room. Connolly racing onto that ball and just took a little bit too much out of the Turles player as he was trying to move it on. Yeah, big chance for Ronan Connolly. He could have went a few yards with it. He got hooked and blocked. Free conceded. Long one coming from Owen Horgan. Horgan strikes this all the way down the field now towards the corner forward. Breaking ball in there. Turles could be true. Oh, brilliant little flick. Shane Buckley with the little flick away. Ball breaks though to Sean Hayes. Sean Hayes angles this across the goals and it tails off and goes wide. It is 11, clean 10 here, 58 on the clock. There wasn't much in that. Yeah, it went across the goals. Big puck out now from Young Breen. Dropping it down here on top of Ben Corvin. It's won this time though by James Doyle and Turles create another attack through Tommy Marr, the captain, into space now. Shane Buckley wins the race to get onto that breaking ball. Darius Balan in there to help him out for Cashel. Ball still down there in the danger area. Turles on the attack, but once more it's Shane Buckley who emerges with that ball and strikes it up along the field here now. Padraig O'Dwyer in there, and the ref is saying that uh, it is going to be a free for Turles. Ronan Connolly, I think it was, with the Hurley just over eager. Three minutes, Ken, we're being told we have of this. Huge free for Tommy Maher now. Um, I have to mention James Doyle. He's been hugely involved since he came in as a substitute. Uh, having a great game. Could be a draw here, Ken. It's looking like even as well, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, but it's, a, it's a not an easy free for Tommy. Uh, and fair play to him as captain. He has stood up today when it's counted. He's been tremendous. But this is a, just behind his 65. A bit of pressure on him right in front of the crowd. And this is a big one. Sizing it up here. Pressure is on. Here we go. Ready to strike this against the breeze here. Sends it in towards the town end and he jumps for joy. He absolutely leaps up to the crowd. He's got a pint. He, he has and so leveled he should, it. And so he should. What a marvellous score from Tommy Meher. Brilliant captain's responsibility. Breaking ball here now. Won by Cashel. Away they go here. Angled across by Adam Daly. Great vision to spot his teammate the far side Ben Corvin feeds it on in Armand is away on the 45 heading towards the 21 all the way in and he's flicked it in and over the bar over score. the bar unbelievable drama here what two minutes score. sit back out here breaking in front of Dara Kelly trying to win that ball holding on to it now just loses out and it is going to be a free in for Cashel Community School, a free end down there. And the backroom team, the whole lot of them are absolutely thrilled down there. Padraig Dalton ready to come on the field and eager to come on. And another massive free. Huge free and Ronan Connolly, they'll take their times in this. 61, 30 gone, three minutes left. He'll, he'll play about 63, maybe 64 minutes. Probably Ronan Connolly's got to take his time in this, but there will be another foray from, 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 from Torres CBS, no doubt. Where will this land? Yellow card for Liam Doyle, the corner back there in that as Ronan Connolly waits. All the casual waits. He strikes this inside. This one no. has tailed off. It's gone wide. It has gone wide. He got one from a more difficult angle a little while without ago. Without a doubt, without a doubt. Here we go. Last poke and here we go. 
It's all to play for. Down the field, breaking ball there, won by Adam Daly. Adam Daly is away. Adam Daly trying to turn inside. Sends this ball over the far side. Good ball. Breaking over there. It's Coravan trying to get a bit of room. Shake off Owen O'Connell. It's Coravan. He sends it in. Skyward dropping in there. Oh, it just tails off. And it's gone wide from Ben Coravan. It is still 12, playing 11. 30 seconds left. Change being made. Ina Ormond is off and Podrick Dalton of Golden is on the field of play here. And that point, Henry, <laughs> listen to it. Yeah, this will probably be the last play now. Owen Horgan is weighing up his options. Substitutions we made. Cashel or Turles making a substitution as well. Tw number 29 coming in. Emmett Ralph for Turles. So a change has been made here and Emmett Ralph is on here for uh, Owen O'Connell is the player that's going off and I think Fabian Ryan is uh, going off as well here for uh, Cashel as well here. So tense, such so drama. So the Joe Mahers and the Joe Egans, you know, they've led the line there. They need to win this ball, the big boys. Sent out the field now, breaking ball out here, breaking around the 65. Won this time by Oshin O'Donoghue. O'Donoghue feeds that ball on again. Cashel go on the attack. Patrick Dalton has his moment. Here he goes, the sub on the underfield, and he's won a free in. He has won a free in here with just seconds remaining in the Harty Cup final. History about to be made. Cashel Community School have never won this, and they're on the verge of it. They're on the verge of it and Connolly will take his time or is it Connolly's taking it? Ben Corvin, this one it looks like. Ben Corvin, Connolly, if, uh, if he was a wise man he'd go back for the last puck out and that's where he's going. Now Ben is taking responsibility as giant captain for this one. So Ben Corvin standing over this. The other giant captain, Ronan Connolly, took all the earlier frees. Ben strikes oh, this. wide. It's wide. That is... That is uh, Three and he'll give one last puck out. Turles have a chance. They have a lifeline here. They win the ball over the far side of the field. 64 26 on the clock here. Time is up. We were told three minutes, four and a half minutes played here of time added on. Cashel have it. Cashel are away again. The shot comes in this time. It's all the way in. And this one has gone wide. To be wide. To be tearing the hairs out. He's blown it up. Long ball in this time. And it's all over. Cashel Community School have won the Hearty Cup the first time ever. Cashel of the Kings. It is a win here for Cashel Community School. Unbelievable scenes here. Oh, just magic here. What wonderful, wonderful stuff here for them. This is something else, Ken. Unbelievable scenes here as Cashel uh, Community School supporters, schoolmates, past pupils, everybody has been involved in the hurling, I suppose, over the last number of years. People listening in from all parts of the world, absolutely thrilled for Cashel uh, Community School to win this is an absolute huge achievement. Eamon Stapleton coming off the pitch there, an excellent game as referee, but wow, the crowds that are coming in onto the pitch. Turner CBS, you know, will be hugely disappointed, but they have won Harty Cups before. They have an opportunity in the All-Ireland Championship again. But today is uh, Cash and Community Schools Day. They could have ruled the fact four wides in the last four minutes that could have nailed the game for them. And uh, But on the day, we have to hand, put our hands up and say Cashel Community School were the better team. They were absolutely fantastic. Their game plan was good. They ran with the ball. They took on the, the, the team. Their defence was tremendous, led by Gerald DeWire. What a game he had at centre-back. Um, of course, Jack oh, Quinn. unbelievable. Jack Quinnan, but special mention to their two wing forwards as well, Aina Ormond and Oshin O'Donoghue, who worked their socks off along with Ben Corvin. So, again, what an absolute unbelievable win for Cashel Community School. Adam Daly, so good throughout, and also Ronan Connolly. They yeah, were, yeah, well, Ad, the good ones. Adam Daly was my man in the match, in, in, obviously, in the All Ireland minor hurling final last year. And playing him at 15 was very smart, but of course he played out in the middle of the field, uh, worked his way throughout the game, ran the game out there, played a brilliant game as well. But uh, this game opened up in the second half. Um, this is what it means to, 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 to a school, you know, 12 points to 11, nail-biting. You could have your 
you know, your, your spectacular game of 121 to 120 or something like that. But 12 11, and, uh, you know, tooth and nail, absolute devastation for Turles CBS. They will be back. They will come at it again. They rolled the subs, they put in three or four subs. There's huge disappointment. You can see the lads down there, uh, hands, you know, heads in their hands. But they will come again. They will work their socks off to get into a, an All Ireland playoff. I think. Uh, the story's not over yet, but today, as Harty Cup champions and the Harty Cup, to have a Harty Cup medal in your back pocket is a unique achievement. And for Cashel Community School, what a boost to that area and the surrounding areas and the clubs of that area who have uh, been involved with the youngsters who have been brought through by their underage coaches. Wonderful win for Cashel. Yeah, their school field is uh, just in the shadow of the rock. If you're there on the school field, you're looking right up at the rock of Cashel and they feel that history, they feel that tradition. Brendan Ryan's work across the last few years and his management team there, Owen Fitzpatrick, who uh, hurled with uh, J.K. Brackens for quite some time, Anthony Roach and Robbie Costigan, all involved there, all working their socks off in the school. And uh, so many are now playing with Tipperary and we've seen Orlo Dwyer, what she's achieved as well. The school has just really made sport um, a, a huge part of it. Yeah, and they're the unsung heroes, uh, all those uh, teachers in the school promoting the game, men and women promoting the game in the schools. You know, there is a curriculum there, obviously extracurricular activities involve sport. We need to promote sport. Uh, it, you know, it, again, of course, moulds the character of every person to win, to lose. Cash, Turtle CBS hurting today. They will have another day out. They have one more opportunity. Back in my day when you were knocked down to schools competition, it was over for the year. But for Cashel Community School, uh, we have to take our hats off. Wonderful effort, wonderful display, and we must say deserved winners. Great stuff. Ken Hogan and Stevie O'Donnell is here as well alongside us. And uh, stay with us for the presentation. We'll have all that here in due course. Stevie O'Donnell of Tip Midwest Radio. What did you make of that? Absolutely. Superb, as I said at halftime in the just analysing it really at halftime, which is Stephen, I was only just saying that it was going to open up in the second half. By heavens, did it open up in the second half? But uh, when I was just talking to Shawnee Reardon a little bit earlier on, he said it's really in the last 10 12 minutes you're going to see this game open. Oh, yeah, and it, it did. But I think that we have new Harty Cup winners. Great excitement in, in the last couple of minutes, as you can see out here now. Casual Community College, the last 10 congratulations. Minutes. Now we're going to start off the presentation. We'd like to uh, man of the match award uh, being presented by uh, two's president Vincent Canan and Jimmy Brown, George O'Dwyer. Okay, Bawalam Kohard Sahurt and Ga Fairnas Kehiunt the Kenya. Walam Kohard Spishita Hurt of Sam Fern, a Vui Karn, Tus Karn and Hartig, as Cashel Community College. I'd like to congratulate both teams, a fantastic sporting performance here today. Um, an excellent game of hurling. No quarter given by both teams, and uh, well done to Cashel Community College. Commiserations to Turles. You can be proud of yourselves and the way you represented your school and your family here today. Congratulations on getting to final and best luck in the All Ireland series. I'd like to thank the referee, Eamon Stapleton, and his officials for the super job you did in officiating the game today. I'd like to thank the management and ground staff here at the FPD Simple Stadium and Tipperary County Board 
for providing the field for such a prestigious final. I'd like to thank, on behalf of the Munster Post Primary Schools and all the post primary schools in, in uh, Munster, we'd like to thank our sponsors, TOOS, the Technological University of Shannon, for helping us promote and develop Gaelic games throughout the province. We look forward to working with TOOS over the next two and a half years to develop students. We'd like to thank the Munster Council for their continuing support and help. We'd like to thank Owen Ryan and the servicing officers for the superb job they're doing in running the large programme of games in such a quick, um, in such quick time. Thanks Owen for your leadership and your commitment to the role. We'd like to thank Ed Donnelly for the super job you're doing in promoting Gaelic games through the online social media. We'd like to thank our hard-working committee um, for their professionalism in running our games in such a professional manner. Um, the committee of uh, Declan Fitzgerald, Hugh Flavin, David McMoog, Tara Wren, Fenton O'Connor, Mike Nash and Lima Mahoney. Thank you. <laughs> Finally, it gives me great pleasure to present this year's Hearty Cup, two Hearty Cup, to the new Hearty Cup winners, Cashel Community College, and to Ronan Connolly and Ben Corrivan. <laughs> Pitcher first up. What a moment for two brilliant captains. <laughs> what a moment. Ashton Community School, the champions. Brilliant, Stevie, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely brilliant for Ben Corvin there, and of course the joint captains and Warren uh, as well. Tall off the storm, and Curran Shark Lacker, there's some fern. Pummel's got a cash and moon! Oh, Jesus. Uh, look, there's so many things I'd like to give today, so I apologise in advance if I forget anyone. But look, I'd just like to start with the school. To Mr. Gallagher, Miss Moore, and Mr. Murray, and all the teachers inside, we can't thank you enough. You've been absolutely brilliant to us all year. So, can we get a round of applause for the teachers? <laughs> Secondly, and nearly most importantly, I'd like to thank our family and friends who supported us all the way through and guided us along the way. And now we're Hearty Cup champions, so I thank you very much. I'd also like to thank all the businesses that have got behind us and sponsored us throughout. <laughs> I won't be able to name them, there's too many of them. But we thank you again for your continued support, and we roll on to the All-Ireland Series with you. Thank you. Look, I just want to finish by saying um, thanks a million to our manager, selectors, Owen Fitz, uh, the big Rob Costigan, uh, Anthony Roach and the one and only Brendan Ryan. So I get a round of applause for the boys. Um, the boys that got behind us that done the water for us, came in to us, they've been with us all year. I uh, want to thank you as well, thanks very much for that. Um, look, last year I just want to thank the boys in front of me here. Jeez, we, knew we knew we'd a fair old chance of this at the start of the year, we kept it quite enough. Um, geez, we're a good team at the end of the day, like. and I'll tell you one thing now, we're not finished yet. We're going all the way, I'll tell you that now, we're going all the way. Um, lastly, just a tourist over there, um, our neighbours, he gave us another great game again today, look. Unfortunately, on the wrong side of it now, as we were last year, but build yourselves up now again and drive on for next year and the year after and the year after that. So last thing I want to say is three cheers for Taurus. Hip hip! Hip hip! Hip hip! A uh, super scene, Stevie. Yeah, you know what is good, and it just isn't there to uh, Ronan Connolly, and what it means for him, what it means for his family. If for Thomas, the parents, William, well. Hart, Sharp, super, super stuff for them, and for the the local parishes that are represented in the Cashel Community School. Obviously, commiserations to Tolle CVS because you know there was always going to be heartbreak at the end for one of the teams, and I really do feel sorry for Tolle CBS here this afternoon, but. 
for a casual community school, how could anyone begrudge him their first ever Dr. Hearty Cup success? Yeah, it's brilliant. And you know the area so well, like and those parishes and the work that goes on in uh, Nakavilla and Golden and yeah, Feathered and, and so forth. Yeah, and like it is, um, the all close knit communities and what it's going to mean for them, especially when Anna Ormond got that point there from Golden Configal. My God Almighty, you could see the delight. Okay, he was brought off, he ran out of steam. He was brought off in the last couple of minutes of the game at that stage, or the last few moments of that game. But you could see the joy, and I have no doubt, but his mother and father, they're out there today, and Michael will be very, very proud and his mother will be absolutely thrilled and it's great for families as well yeah absolutely and we're looking out there at uh, the the history the tradition and all that goes into it and uh, like these days are rare they are you know what and i was uh, just like adam daly i was only speaking to his granny and that's rita daly inside in tipperary town i was speaking to her there about maybe three weeks ago and i was just talking to her about the, the Dr. Hearty Cup and she said, you know what, wouldn't I love it, she said, she's in her 90s now and I just said, you know, what, what would you do if, if he won the, the Hearty Cup? Oh, stop, she said, I would <laughs> love it. And now Adam is a winner, he's a winner. Now, I think that that was the trump card really for Cashel Community School because last year he came in from Rockwell College, transferred into the school, the Cashel Community School, and I think that that was really the trump card there today. But Joe uh, Dwyer, the centre back to me, was outstanding once again. Absolutely. We said it a little bit earlier at, in the half time analysis. We were saying that. I said it to Shawnee Reid and, and Francis Coughlin above. Uh, you know, fellas like Joe Dwyer, if you had a couple more of them as leaders around the field, Jimmy Ryan was there for Tull at CBS. But again, feel sorry for Tull at CBS. Their hearts are broken out there today for the players and the management. But I have no doubt. But uh, again, for Cashel Community School, they'll. Two teams now will go forward to the quarterfinals of the competition of the, the Crow Cup. And again, well, hopefully we will see more great matches going forward. Excellent stuff. Stevie O'Donnell, many thanks for joining us from uh, Tip Midwest Radio. And uh, we'll leave the final word today with uh, Ken Hogan, who is here. And uh, watch this Hearty Cup final wishes as well. And uh, magic scenes, Ken. An absolute pleasure to be here, Stephen, with you. Uh, wonderful game, I suppose, as Tipperary people, we're very proud of the fact that we had two schools contesting the Hearty Cup final. Uh, we weren't disappointed, it was a tremendous game, so tight in the first half, five points to four at half time. Uh, we all thought that maybe Torres would come out and open up in the second half to have, to have that ability to do that, but the tigerish tackling of the, of the, of the Cashel Community School defence, uh, the wonderful midfield play of Adam Daly and Shane Buckley, but particularly their half-forward line, Corvin in the centre, and all came good with points from play, uh, Oshin O'Donoghue and, of course, Aina Ormond, a brilliant point. Roland Connolly kept him in touch with Freeze, scored a vital one down here in the sideline. I suppose going down the track with time up, they missed two or three points that would have, you know, clinched the deal for them. But isn't it tantalising, really? 12 points to 11, nail-biting stuff. Uh, Torres introduced four subs, so I can see by the Torres CBS situation, they have ability in the overall squad, you know. Um, uh, Cashel used one or two, but Torres used all their full consignment of, of, of subs, so they have ability on the bench as well. They will still have a say in the All-Ireland Championship. Today was a magnificent day. It's great to see Simple Stadium, huge crowds, the pride with the parents, the pride with the, the siblings, and families right throughout West Tipperary, you know, absolutely wonderful. Tremendous victory. Gerald the Wire getting mad in a match. Fully deserved. Good, isn't he, Ken? Ah, fully deserved. You know, right through the game, he opened up from the very word go. But tactically, Brendan Ryan did a wonderful job. He had him set up brilliantly to stifle uh, the threat of that attack that uh, Torres CBS have. Torres will have another day. But what a night it'll be in Cashel tonight. Oh, it'll be great stuff. Many thanks. Ken Hogan here alongside. I'll be in Cashel tonight celebrating that one, I think, <laughs> for where the party will be in Tipperary. And if you're around, get along to that. It is going to be magnificent. First time ever to win the Hearty Cup. Cashel Community School are the champions of Munster. And both teams roll on and well done to Turla CBS for making a great final as well. Today is Cashel Community Schools Day. From me, Stephen Gleeson, from Robert Healy and all his staff, from Ken Hogan here alongside me. Hope you enjoyed our coverage here from Turles today. It is Cashel's Day, the city of the kings, Cashel Community School 
are the Hearty Cup champions. From us here, Slán and Ish.